Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the Sony A6400, the newest mirrorless camera from Sony. And I'm filming with it right now so you can see exactly, you know, what kind of video quality, audio quality this camera is capable of producing. The camera actually goes for $898 US for just the camera body, which is fairly affordable considering how much the A6500 is. The A6400 is significantly cheaper because it doesn't have the image stabilization system for the sensor, but it does have the 180 degree flip screen, which is quite nice, especially for doing what I'm doing right now. I could see the screen on the top of the camera and I could see myself being recorded. So it's perfect for reviewers on YouTube, vloggers, things like that. The Sony a6400 comes in a few kits. Like I said, it's 898 for the camera body. If you get it with the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, it goes for about 998 or 1000. With the 18 to 135 millimeter kit lens, which is what I opted for for this review, it goes for 1298 US. And that gives you a lot more range and usability. In addition, the 16 to 50 millimeter kit is going to make the camera much smaller in size as a package. The 18 to 135 is a significantly larger. With the 16 to 50 pancake lens, you can pretty much fit the camera in a large pocket. And that is a nice advantage depending on what your needs are. So I just wanted to go over a few key features of the A6400 in case you're not aware. And then we're going to get into, you know, the nitty gritty. I got hands on. I'm going to show you how the menu systems work and just basic functionality of the camera, what the buttons do and, and, you know, all that type of stuff. Then I'm going to show you sample photos and sample video, and then we will get into the conclusion. I also tested the A6400 with the killer Sony FE 70 to 200 millimeter GM lens at a Taekwondo tournament. And I also took portraits of the kids with this lens phenomenal lens and it performed amazing on the a6400 with that new killer autofocus system the live tracking and all that it really really performed awesome especially in the low light taekwondo tournament conditions in particular i was really impressed all right so quickly just some of the key features we got a 24 megapixel xmor sensor and it's an aps-c sensor so it's not full frame it's crop factor a little bit smaller Still get great depth of field control though, and low light abilities. It has a max ISO of 102,000, which is remarkable. It's not really that good at 102,000, but it's nice to have that option. It used to max out at 50,000 or so, and now it goes up to 102. So it also can do 11 frames per second. It has 429 phase detection AF points embedded in the sensor. The camera weighs in at 14.22 ounces or about 400 grams. So it's fairly lightweight considering the features and whatnot. The screen on the back is three inches and it's a touch screen and it flips 180. So you can see, you know, when you're in front of the camera, it also flips downward when you're looking at it. So you can hold the camera over your head. It flips almost all the way. The viewfinder is an OLED viewfinder and the quality is excellent on the viewfinder. In my opinion, I really thought looking through it, I was impressed at how good it looked. The camera also has built-in Wi-Fi and NFC, so if you're out in the field, you can just push the photos right to your smartphone, and it worked really well. I did that at the Taekwondo tournament, for example. I was sending pictures right at the tournament, right off the camera. It also has a microphone input jack on the side. It has a uh, H micro HDMI port out, and it also has a USB cable on the side. It takes the older, it takes the older 50 battery series. It doesn't have the newer battery, so battery life isn't the greatest on this camera. That's kind of a downside, but overall, battery life was pretty good, I thought. At the Taekwondo tournament, for example, I took about 3,000 photos and I had three batteries. I went through two batteries and about half of the third battery, and I was looking at the photos on the camera a lot as well. So that's quite not, you know, that's pretty good. I mean, it was all day shooting and it was a lot of shooting. I was shooting in burst mode, taking tons and tons of photos. So, and you got to imagine it's powering the image stabilization on the lens as well as the screen on the back. And I was using the viewfinder most of the time, which uses more juice. So just food for thought, get a couple extra batteries. The video quality is really good on this camera as well. I took, a, you can use the touch to focus feature when recording video. If you're recording, you can just tap the screen and the focus will transition to where your finger touches. You can get some really nice cinematography effects when doing that. So. I really enjoy that touch to focus technology. It also has a touch to track subjects, which is basically touch on a subject that's in, in the scene if you have that option enabled, and it'll just track that subject no matter where you move the camera or where the subject moves, and it works very, very well.
So BH Photo was kind enough to let me borrow this camera for this review, and I just wanted to do a quick unboxing of what this looks like when you buy it if you get it with the kit lens like I did. So just really quickly, uh, if you open the box, this is what you're going to expect to see with the E18 to 135mm lens, a couple pamphlets in there that comes with it, and then you open the box and here you, here's what you got. You got the accessories on the right, comes with a nice neck strap, pretty high quality. You got your charger here, you have to charge the battery in the camera, and that's the charging cable right there plug it in the wall. That's the viewfinder, a um, little attachment there, the eyepiece cup. And here's the kit lens. Comes all packaged up like that. It's got the lens hood. It's a really high quality lens. Be sure to check out my review of this lens. I highly recommend it. It's got great range and very, very good image quality. Extremely sharp. It's a very good lens overall, I would say. Now here is the A6400. It's wrapped up nice and uh, tidy in a little bag there. And there she is. Comes with the cap on there to protect the sensor. Looking at it from the top, you can see the finish on there. It's got that like textured finish, very nice build quality. Now again, looking at it from the side, you have the port door there on the left and the screen. I have it in 180 mode right now. So you can see what it looks like, the engineering on the hinge and whatnot. You got your microphone input on the side and your screen articulates, you can see just how far it comes down and out and you can aim it downwards so you can hold it over your head like I mentioned earlier see the tripod mount on the bottom and uh, it's a really nice design overall that's the eye cup piece there, you put that on there and it really you know cinches up to your eye quite nice and basically you just want to throw your battery in there and get it charging so you just plug that cable in, charge it up and you're good to go then you can take the lens cap off and on the camera and the lens and you can mount it up. You just gotta line up the white dot on the lens to the white dot on the camera. Now obviously if you've done this before you you know it's very simple but if you've never done this before then this is important and uh, you might be a little nervous you know you don't want to break anything you don't want to mess anything up so that's how you do it it's very simple and here we are in the field Hey guys, what's happening? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and I'm recording with the Sony A6400 right now. It's really windy out. Sorry about the wind, noise, but I'm going to take a couple pictures at this cool trestle here. So stay tuned. Alright guys, so I got the A6400 here and I just wanted to go over the camera body quickly for those new to the Sony mirrorless camera systems. It's not rocket science or anything like that, but I uh, just wanted to go over a few things. What you got here is the hot shoe. This little plastic thing comes out and you can put the accessory flash units in there, audio microphones and things like that. That's what that's for on the top. Over here you have the mode dial. This is where you select the different modes that the camera is capable of using has all different modes, got a panorama mode here, scene selection mode, auto mode, program auto mode, it's got aperture priority mode which is the A, S is shutter priority, M stands for manual mode, MR stands for memory recall mode, and then of course you have movie mode which is you know for recording videos, and then you have your S and Q mode which is for dialing in specific shutter speeds and things like that. I'll have to do a separate video on that. Then you have an adjustment dial here that you can turn, has nice feedback. You can usually use this to control aperture and things like that. 
You also have a custom button right here, which is quite nice for custom programming. You can change that to pretty much whatever you want. Then on the top, you have an on and off toggle here. You see how it's like a rocker toggle? That's how you turn the camera on and off. And then on the top here is the shutter button. Now you can press that shutter button down halfway, and then when you press it all the way, it'll take the photo. I actually have the self timer set right now, that's why it was beeping like that. So halfway will focus, and then when you press it all the way, it'll actually fire the shot. Now let's look at the underside of the camera really quick. So on the bottom of the camera, you have the tripod mount here, and you also have the door where you put your battery. So in there is where the battery goes, and the memory card also goes in there. I don't have one in there right now, but here's the memory card I'm using currently. It's Extreme Pro. I just bought this one. Works really well. And you just slide the memory card in like so. It goes in this way. Like that. And it clicks in there. And also the battery has this little blue tab to hold it in. So you pull that tab out of the way and then the battery will come out. And there is the battery. I'll just put that back in there. Like so. You just slide this little lever over on the door. It's got like a little lock lever. I wish it automatically locked, but it doesn't. Now also looking at it from the underside, it's a little bit dark, but right in here is the lens release button. And you just press that in order to release the lens. Then looking at the front, you have the light here, which will help you focus in dark conditions. You also have a sensor there. You got the microphone input. It's kind of hard to see there. Little mics. You got stereo mic, one on each side. And then looking on this side, you have your plugs. So you have your charger plug, which is a USB cable. You have a micro HDMI cable, and you also have a microphone jack there, which is quite nice. Looking at the top, that little symbol there, that stands for where the sensor is. So if you're doing uh, measurements for macro photography and things like that, you can uh, measure from that line. And you also have a flash here. There's a button on the back. You can pop that, and the flash will pop up like so. This is the flash. And it comes up really high so it'll look over the lens quite well. Sometimes you want to take the lens hood off, however, um, just so you don't get a shadow from the flash. Just keep that in mind. All right, so looking at it from the back of the camera, over here you have the record button. That is for video. Just turn here and you can see there is your flash release. And then you have your function button. You have your autofocus manual focus toggle here. You have an auto exposure lock, menu button, display button. That'll change the way the screen displays when you press that. And the function button will bring you into a function menu here on the bottom. And you can custom configure this menu. It's very powerful. And then, of course, let me just show you this real quick. The screen comes out quite far. And you can flip it all the way up like so. Let's pull it out. Flip it up into a 180 style and you can get a 180 view. You can see there. And you also have the garbage can there for deleting photos when you're in playback mode. There's your playback button. And over here is your ISO button. You can adjust your ISO. Just hit the shutter button to get it back into photo mode. And then you hit your ISO on the right and you get your ISO buttons. And you can adjust that, set it to auto, all sorts of things like that. I recommend leaving it on auto if you're new to the camera. All right, so if you're new to this camera, I just wanted to go over a couple of quick settings just to get you going. Now, if you hit this on the left side of the dial here, it'll bring you into the drive mode area, all right? So by default, right now, I have the camera selected on JPEG photo quality, but notice on your drive mode, you have single shooting, and then you have high speed continuous shooting. There's little arrows to the right and the left, and you can change that. See, now I'm at middle, speed continuous shooting, low speed continuous shooting, and then high plus. You're not going to get the best hit rate at high plus, although you will get the most photos per second. I notice if you have it on high or middle, for example, you do tend to get a higher hit rate, although the hit rate is quite impressive on this camera with the new autofocus system, I gotta say. But anyways, if you scroll down, you then have self timer mode, and you can change that to 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 2 seconds. Great for self-portraits and, you know, just if you want the camera to be super steady. Then down here you got self-timer continuous. It'll take three images for you, which is, again, great if you're taking self, 
um, portraits or family portraits, there's always somebody blinking. So you're better off setting it for three images. And oh, down further, you got bracketing, great for HDR photography, takes multiple exposures. And then you just have even more bracketing features, more advanced stuff. I'm not gonna go over right now, otherwise this video will be forever. Now, if you hit the function button, you can go in here and you can scroll over to focus mode. And in focus mode, right now I have the camera set to continuous focus, continuous autofocus. So that means it's always gonna track when you hold the shutter button down halfway. It'll just constantly be tracking. Let me just change the focus to the center, like so. Now, let me just go back into the function and I will change my focus area. Right now it's set to focus area like that. I'm just gonna go to wide mode. And now, if I press the shutter button down, you can see all those focus points coming up. I'm just holding the shutter button down halfway. And if I take a shot, it's gonna take a shot. But if you hold the shutter down, it's constantly tracking. Now, if I go back to the function men menu and change it off continuous and just put it on AFA for automatic, AFA will actually switch between AFS, which is single shot mode, and autofocus continuous. So it's a great place to start if you know, you're new to the camera system, you're not sure what you want. AFA is a good way to go because the camera will automatically detect if your subjects are moving. So now when I hold the shutter down, notice how it's just locking because it doesn't see anything moving in the scene. So it's pretty much on AFS mode. And uh, it's just a good feature and it's good to know those basic concepts if you're new to the camera system. Now if you hit on the bottom of the dial here, if you hit that, you can see you have your exposure compensation and you can then dial that in as needed. I usually leave it on zero for the most part. Now let me just go into the menu really quick and show you what that looks like. I'm in the favorites area right now. So you can see I have a bunch of stuff loaded into the favorites menu. This is an awesome feature and I highly recommend checking it out for sure. So a couple of things I put into the favorite menu is interval shooting function. Now this is a new feature to the Sony cameras and it allows you to do time-lapse photography, which is fantastic. I love this feature and I really like the way Sony designed it because it tells you the total time that you're gonna be shooting, which a lot of other cameras don't do that. It'll give you the amount of shots you want and stuff, but it won't tell you how many, you know, how long it's gonna take you. You know, you have to actually do the math. So first of all, you have to turn interval shooting on in order to use it. Right now I have it set to off. If you have it on, when you go and take, a, when you go to take a picture like this, it'll automatically start the interval shooting. So that's why you have to turn it on and off. Let me go back to the menu here. Now going over the settings, you got the shooting start time, shooting interval. This is how many seconds will be in between each shot. I found five seconds is pretty good. 10 seconds might be too long depending on what you're doing, but it will speed up what's going on. So clouds will go past really fast if you do, you know, once every 10 seconds for 300 shots, for example. AE tracking sensitivity, this will basically adjust the auto exposure. You know, if the sun is rising, for example, and things like that, this is the sensitivity of that. And then on page two, you can have it set to silent interval shooting, which is a nice feature. And then you have shoot interval priority. So I'm gonna do a separate video on this, but I just wanted to show you how it you know, works just really quickly. And I'll show you some sample time lapses as well. But um, that's just a quick thing there. Now if I hit the menu button, go back in here to my menu, and you can see you got touch operation, all sorts of other stuff, recording, I have it set to 4K quality. And if you go to the right, here's another page of settings I have, creative style. This is a great way to change the way your photos look straight off the camera. You can set it to standard, vivid, neutral, clear, and you could use this in raw quality. Deep, light, portrait, landscape it'll punch up the colors for you sunset will exaggerate colors in this and you know for the uh, yellows and things like that autumn leaves you got some black and white sepia and so forth 
So that's a pretty cool feature. And then picture effects, you do have to be in JPEG mode for picture effects, but this is fun. You got toy camera, pop, you know, retro, all sorts of cool features to play around with. High contrast mono is cool. Selective color is cool. And uh, just a bunch of other features. You got, you know, uh, HDR painting, you got miniature auto, watercolor mode, and illustration mode, which is a lot of fun. I'm just gonna leave that off for now. Go back to menu. But these are some features that you're gonna wanna play with if you're new to the camera system for sure. And uh, you got zoom setting, clear image zoom on. You actually have to set a button up for zoom. But if you're using the power zoom lens, which you can also get as a kit with this camera, the 16 to 50, the zoom, clear image zoom on, it'll automatically zoom past 50 millimeter if you're using the zoom toggle, which is quite nice. Now, if I go over to the right, I'm back into one mode, so this is camera one, and I'm just going to go through the menu. You can just see how vast the menu system is. I'll do another video on this at some point to break down the menu system in more detail, but be sure to check out my how-to area on my uh, YouTube channel and on the website because I go over this in great detail, and all the Sony cameras work exactly the same, so the menu systems are all the same. They just have slightly different features depending on the camera model, but the basic concept is identical. So you can check out my Sony HX99 video I just did, and I did a really extensive how-to on the menu system and how to use the camera, and that will totally apply to this camera as well. So be sure to check that video out, and I will link it below just so you can check that out because it goes through all these different settings in detail. And I'm not going to do that with this video, otherwise it'll be hours long. It's really deep and really vast. You can see it's page 3 of 14 on just this one camera icon. So I'm just going to scroll through here, and you can see all these different features and options. Just remarkable. There's a bunch of other options, white balance, skin softening, it's a really cool effect for uh, portrait shooting, focus magnifier, face registration, it's got smile shutter, and then if you go to the, ta the second tab, this is where you select your recording settings for file format, so right now I have it set to 4K, that's the best quality. And then once you have that mode set, you could then go to the record setting and you can change your different record settings for 4K mode. If you're not seeing these numbers here, that's because your camera is set to PAL mode. You can change that as well in here. Then you have all these other options. You can actually start recording with the shutter button if you want. If you don't want to use this record button on the side, that's where that option is. And then you got silent shooting electronic front curtain shutter that's where you can change your shutter your shutter mode steady shot you can turn that stabilization on and off here's your zoom settings if you're using the camera in a studio environment you're going to want to change your live view display setting effect to off because you're using manual mode and you'll be exposing with a flash for example so you're going to need to turn that off otherwise your scene is going to look dark on your screen when using manual mode in a studio environment when you're using off-camera flash for example you might struggle with that if you're new to the Sony camera system. Now here's where all the custom keys are, and Sony updated this to show you pictures and stuff. So it'll actually show you what you're programming visually, which is really awesome. Nice upgrade there, Sony. Good work, good work. And here's just a bunch more features. Audio signals, you can turn that stuff off. Send to smartphone, here's all of those features. I love using that feature now with the, with the phone and you just push, you could be out in the field and you just push the images right to the phone and then you can share them with your friends on site. Playback options, do different slideshows. This is great if you're hooking up to a TV or something. Monitor brightness, this is another nice feature. You can go in here and adjust the brightness of the camera. There's actually a sunny weather mode here. If you just click that and then click the center, you can go to sunny weather and that'll make the screen super bright for when you're out in the sun and you can't see it but it does you know chew up some juice on the battery of course mode dial guide this is if you scroll the wheel on different modes it'll actually give you an indication explaining what that mode does and you can turn that on or off i, I leave it off and then power saving this is great for uh if you want your camera to shut off or stay on longer you can turn that on Display quality, you can make that higher quality, but it'll use a little more battery life. Now here is where you set your NTSC 
and PAL selector. Remember how I was telling you the frame rate will be different in PAL mode versus NTSC. So that's where you change that option. Right now I have the camera set to NTSC and that's why my shutter, my uh, frame rates are 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second as opposed to 25 and things like that and 50 which will be PAL mode. So that's for those who have to change that. Here's all the touch operation settings and stuff. Cleaning mode. Go in there and change all that. Remote control. If you're using a remote control, you need to enable it here. And then it'll, it'll use that indicator on the front grip. And uh, that's how you use a remote if you're in front of the camera. USB power supply. You can turn that on there. It'll allow you to use the camera while you have it plugged into a USB power source. You do still have to have the battery in the camera though. And then here's where you put your date and time and stuff like that and you format your memory card. And this will just show you the version of the camera. Right now I'm still using the original firmware at the time of this review. It'll come out with updates at some point. And again, here's back to your favorites area. And this is what I have set up in the favorites area because these are the features I use most. And here on page three of the My Menu setting, this is where, you know, depending on how much stuff you have programmed, programmed in here, your page numbers will, you know, might change. But here's where you add a new item, delete an item, sort an item, and so forth. So you can just add an item in here, and then you can scroll through, and, you know, panorama size, for example, let's add that. And you can see I can add it to any number of five pages. So I'll just add it to, like, page three, like so. I just added it. Okay, and now if I hit the menu button, now I have four pages. See how it's page four of four? And if I go to the right, now I have panorama size. And here's all the other settings. So that's how you do that. So that's a quick just overview of the camera menu system. Again, if you're new to the camera and you just wanted to, you know, get going really fast, that should get you going. All right, guys? So feel free to ask questions, of course, below. And uh, I will do more tutorials on this camera as... Uh, as the days go by. I just wanted to go over some of the sample photos from the Sony a6400. Now as I already mentioned in the review I used the kit lens, the 18 to 135 millimeter kit lens and up here on the top left you can see the EXIF information you know for what they, I had the camera set for when I was shooting. These particular photos were taken in full auto mode and I was just zooming in and out. So let's go over some of these photos quick. This is just a bridge picture and it's the you know the pylon that supports this massive bridge and this is just a pipe, water pipe that was running nearby and you can just see what kind of color, clarity, depth of field, and everything like that that you can get with the 18 to 135 millimeter lens and the Sony a6400. Now here, looking at the bridge, I just actually got close to the weeds and wanted to show what it would look like with the bridge out of focus in the background. So that larger APS-C sensor gets you really good separation like this and that's something that smaller sensor cameras do not really get you so that was the purpose of this photo now here's a photo just zoomed out a little bit and the bridge is still out of focus a little bit but i just wanted to show you what it looked like a little further away from the bridge with less out of focus you know what i'm saying i am still focused on the weeds though as you can see they're nice and clear if i zoom in here there's tons more photos on my website I'll show you in a minute. I have many more bridge pictures, but I don't want this segment to be so long. If you really want to see a ton of sample photos, go to my website below the video. I will have a review link to the actual written review, and that's where all the sample photos will be, and there's hundreds of them. Check that out if you want to see more sample photos, but I just got to move on here. Now here's an example of harsh lighting. But this is what the camera did straight off the camera, so I just wanted to show you. And this is zoomed all the way into 135 millimeter. Just wanted to show you a zoom range test, basically, because this used to be a lake. And you can see on the far side, that's a dam that they're rebuilding. So it's actually called Beaver Dam. So at 135 millimeter from where I'm standing, this is what it looks like. And then at 100 millimeter, this is what it looks like. And you can see the old rock walls under the dam. It's awesome. 83 millimeter, this is what you get. And then zoomed out to 59 millimeter, this is what you see. And then at 18 millimeter, this is what you see. So these are all the shots I got from the exact same location using the 18 to 135 millimeter kit lens on the Sony a6400. All right, so here's a few more shots. Now this is just, this is actually a raw file I wanted to show you. And the lighting was a little bit better. 
and I was zoomed into 135 millimeter to get the maximum depth of field separation from the background and you can see it looks really good. If I zoom in there you can see some of the detail and here's just a shot um, shooting through the tunnel and I have a lot more pictures from this area so be sure to go to the website. This is just a quick dynamic range test so this was shot in full auto using raw quality and this is what the actual camera did straight off the camera but I took another image I made a virtual copy here in Lightroom and I adjusted it and you can see how much information you can pull out of the image if you do a quick adjustment and it's quite remarkable how much detail the raw file actually captures and the Sony you know sensor of course which is what is allowing for all this extra information to be captured quick dynamic range test there so here's just a picture of some ice I thought it looks pretty cool here is Jay sleeping in the car and this is actually at ISO 6400 so it's pretty high ISO and I just wanted to zoom in here so you can see the noise and you know the clarity the little bit of sharpness that was lost due to the higher noise value this is just an image of the sunset and this is actually high point this tower here and I took a number of images at varying focal lengths here and if you look up at the top left you'll see this one's 64 millimeter this one is at 30 millimeter so you can see the tower there in the center is very small and here's just a vertical version this is at 135 millimeter vertical and I just like the way the layering you know looked same vertical image but this time at 78 millimeter and now this particular image I was using the Sony FE 70 to 200 millimeter GM lens and this shot was taken at 200 millimeter now here is just a couple HDR sample photos this was multiple exposures blended together using HDR effects pro and I was going for an, a very extreme look with this particular image so you might think this looks insane and not realistic at all and that is kind of what I was going for with this particular frame I was going for like maximum exaggeration so this is what you can get if you want to do some HDR photos here's a little bit more realistic version I did still edit this it's an HDR photo and it's pretty exaggerated don't get me wrong but not as exaggerated as this one so it's a really cool old school fire truck and here's another frame looking straight on and this was with the kit lens the 18 to 135 millimeter so I had the camera set to bracketing mode I took multiple frames at 2 EV spread and there's more information about that on the website full article so be sure to check out the full review if you want to learn more about the HDR process and stuff and here's a much more subtle HDR image this is also an HDR but it's way more subtle it's hard to tell it almost looks like just a single frame that I edited but it's actually a blended a blend of exposures and here's another one just zoomed in a little more here's another one of that first truck with a little bit less processing so it doesn't look as exaggerated but it is still an HDR photo with quite a bit of editing done to it and here's just a picture of drops on my dad's hood of his car he waxed it the day before and it actually rained and you can just see the detail and clarity and color is fantastic on the Sony a6400 using the 18 to 135 millimeter kit lens and this is actually at ISO 800 so you can see up here there is a little bit of noise and you do lose a little bit of detail but overall it's very very good quality in my opinion and here's one of Jace this particular image I took using the 70 to 200 millimeter GM lens and if you zoom in here you can see just how absolutely fantastic the quality is on this image this is a TIFF file because I did bring it into Photoshop and I edited it a little bit he had a couple of marks on his face and stuff I cleaned up because I did want to print this photo I was very very happy with the result so I did edit it a little bit, but it was basically just a couple of skin imperfections, nothing crazy. And you can see, just phenomenal. And here's the black and white version, which I actually like even more. And here's one of Layla. This one's completely unedited, just a raw file. And she's been twirling her tongue and stuff, making these funny faces lately. Here's one of Chopper. You might remember Chopper from my older reviews. He's uh, really starting to get old. He's like 12, 13 years old now, but he's still around for those of you that have been around from the years I've been doing reviews here. And this is Chippy. This is a newer dog that my brother has gotten and a feisty little beast but you can see the clarity and sharpness is fantastic and the dog never stops moving so this is a super high energy dog so getting sharp shots is not exactly easy but you can see the Sony a6400 is clearly capable of getting fantastic image quality when you have a top quality lens mounted 
like the 70 to 200 millimeter GM lens. Now I have the dog running towards me and I got tons of action photos. The autofocus system on the A6400 is killer. So you can use this at sporting events and things like that. This focus is a little bit off on this one, but the majority of them are really good. And dogs running fast, you know just how fast they run. It's insane and trying to capture them at speed, especially when zoomed in to 200 millimeter is very difficult. But you know, you can see the A6400 is more than capable of doing the job. And these are really fast dogs. So keep that in mind. It is taking just a second for these photos to load every time I click on one, but overall very happy with the results. And here's one where the dog is actually sitting still and you can see just the fantastic clarity and detail on the fur again. You really can't get better than this with the APS-C, this is a 100% crop, sensor. Sony makes the best sensors, and you can see here just how good they are. Just look at the detail on the hair and the fur. It's absolutely incredible. Colors, contrast, it's all really, really good. That's 100% crop. And here's one of a delicious beer that my brother actually got me. This company is called Equilibrium. They make some really fantastic beer, local brewery. Here's one of my dad's truck. This is taken with the 70 to 200 GM lens again. And this was just a longer exposure at night, 30 seconds. I parked on a overpass and just took this shot. And you can see, you know, the image quality is great. It's a cool streaky light scene and it's easy to do. You just, you know, set the camera to manual mode and uh, you can get those longer exposures when it's dark out. It was actually really dark compared to how this looks. It looked a little bit more like this, you know, this darker exposure. Just got more of a curve here. And I took some Taekwondo photos. I went to a tournament and got some action photos in horrible lighting conditions. The lighting was absolutely terrible in this gymnasium. So I was at ISO 2500 for this particular shot using the 70 to 200 millimeter GM lens and I was at I was pretty far away for this particular uh, sequence but they you know came out really good and you can see you know the detail is excellent captured some action she was actually being tested for her belt and this was just some of the medals that they give away I thought that looked pretty cool with the out of focus area and stuff and this is my buddy Derek he was getting some uh, getting an award here and he just completed his sequence and this is at ISO 3200 so if I zoom in here you can see the noise in the background it's a raw file a little bit of noise there at ISO 3200 but overall excellent quality at the end of the day in the real world for an APS-C sensor you know at this price point Sony really does make the best sensors and there he is with the metal giving a high five got a gold medal for his performance there here's a shot of an athlete about to fight and here's another one fight getting ready to go here and there's a nice kick to the face <laughs> these kids were so fast it was unbelievable all right so here's one of a church scene all right so now the image is loaded and you can see that banding went away and here's a, one of that beer that i showed you earlier except this time it's actually poured in a glass and you can see just how incredibly delicious it looks and here's another scene i've been wanting to take this picture for a long time and uh, it just seemed like a good day to check it out. Nice reflection. And I edited this file a bit, so I exaggerated the colors a little bit and went for a, you know, subdued look, kind of like a vintage look. Here's one from the Batrick Hill Wildlife Preserve. Just trying to illustrate the depth of field you can get and separation with a large sensor like this with a top quality lens. And here's another example. You can see that background blur is just killer. And here's one of Layla just giving me a couple of funny faces here. I was just doing a couple of quick portrait shots to show you what you can do with a killer lens and the Sony a6400. And as you can see, it's absolutely fantastic quality. Here's a night scene and just there was a car driving by. So I got some streaky lights there, an extremely low light here. I was using a tripod though. So the exposures were longer. This is at ISO 100 at nighttime. And you can see just how good the image looks. Here's one of the old clock and one tenth of a second, 200 millimeter, pretty cool. Now I took a couple of test shots with the my Canon EF 135 millimeter f2 lens using the Metabones lens adapter and I also took some shots with my old school 50 millimeter Minolta lens f1.4 using a passive lens adapter. 
And here's one with the 135 millimeter of Jace. I did brighten the eyes a little bit on this particular frame, but you can see 135 millimeter f2, the background is just pure butter. And, you know, that's the kind of separation you can get when using a lens like that with such a large sensor like the a6400 offers. And you can get lens adapters, fairly reasonable. If you want the electronic lens adapters, they're a little bit more expensive. But you can still do this type of photography with a cheaper passive lens adapter. You're just going to need to manually focus. And here's just another image with the 135 millimeter. And here's another one just of this plant here so you can see the background rendering with such a high quality lens like the 135 millimeter f2 and one more now here's using the 50 millimeter minolta f1.4 lens it's an mc lens it's much older it's from like the 80s here's one of jace using that lens now i had a manually focus with this lens and i had it wide open at f1.4 and the sony a6400 has some tools in there to help you manually focus one of them is called focus peaking basically it'll show you little dots where the sharpness is on the screen when you're focusing so you'll actually see like over the eye here you would see like little dots coming up i'll, I'll do a tutorial on this and then you know that your focus is pretty close. It basically shows you the high contrast areas that are sharp um, and it overlays it on the LCD screen or the viewfinder so you can see where the sharpness is. And that really, really helps when you're trying to manually focus in a situation like this. You can also use the zoom magnify tool that the A6400 has built in and that'll help you make sure that you have the focus exactly where you want it as well. And here's my boy Jace making some funny faces. He's such a cutie. And I'm really happy with how these photos came out. Here's another one I just took. We made some fondue. And, you know, that's the bowl of the fondue. And then a fork, obviously, with some bread. And you can just see that depth of field separation is killer. So if you're a food reviewer or something like that, this camera is really good for that type of stuff. If you have a fast piece of glass on it like this. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the sample photos. But what I wanted to show you is if you go to my website here, this is the first time you're going to see my new website in a video. I've been working on it for a couple of months now, and this is the first review that I'm going to you know, promote basically on the new site. It is still under construction. I still have some work to do on the new website, but the link below will bring you to this A6400 review, like the written review. But up here, you have your guides, all my e-mount lens guides, camera guides, things like that. Reviews, if you hover over the reviews, you can then access all my reviews that I currently have published on here. And all these other category, categories are self-explanatory. If you click the Sony Alpha Lab, that'll bring you to the home page. And this cool trending icon here will show you the latest trending articles, things like that. Up here are the social media links on the top right. And, but anyways, if you scroll down, you will see I gave the A6400 a 92 out of 100 score. I was extremely impressed with this camera. I actually want this camera for myself. And just keep, if you want more information, come to the written article because I go in great detail. I explain things further than I do in this review. And you can get more information by coming here. Now, I just wanted to show you, if you scroll down, I go over the touch focus. Here's all the key features and things like that. Now, if you keep going down, you get to the sample photos. Now, here's the lab testing sample photos. This is where you can go and you can see like all the ISOs. Here's ISO 100 and 2400, and here's 100% crop on the right. If you just click on these photos, it'll bring it up into a nice gallery like this. And then you can just click these arrows on the right and you can scroll through. And notice how it gives you the EXIF information down below. So you can scroll through the images, look at all these high ISO images, and see how the camera performs in, you know, a much larger version. And then if you scroll down further, dynamic range testing, resolution testing, and then here's more sample photos, real world photos. So I told you there was more photos of that bridge and stuff, as you can see here. Here's the more photos. And if you just click on them, it'll bring you into that nice gallery like I was showing you before. And you can get more detailed view. And here's more photos of that bridge at various focal ranges and stuff. And then if you scroll all the way down, it'll show you more Taekwondo shots. I got a lot more shots. And let me just scroll down. Here's an actual 4K video of some of one of the Taekwondo matches. You can check that out. It's in 4K. 
more dog pictures more pictures of the kids and here's the HDR photos here's picture effects so you can see some of the picture effects sample photos and more sample photos here for the other lenses then I have a link to the firmware updates recommended accessories for the Sony a6400 and then down here is like the review conclusion where I give you all the different categories and the score I give for all the different categories all right and then there's also going to be a pros and cons here you will see by the time you click on this that'll be updated this review actually isn't published yet but it will be published by the time this review comes out on YouTube which is what you're watching now and then if you scroll down there'll be related articles like the a6500 review but if you keep scrolling the most recent article will just automatically pop up it, this web, new website has this awesome infinite scroll feature and then on the right hand side the latest reviews will be there for you to click on as well so and then of course you can click on the Sony Alpha Lab that'll bring you to the home page and here's what the home page currently looks like at the time of this review it's obviously gonna look different probably by the time you watch this but if you scroll down it'll go over all the different categories and stuff I have set up and you can check that stuff out Oh boy, ready for this? Wow, that looks thick. It's a pretty scene. Some more video. This is at 1 50th of a second, so it's actually at f22 right now to maintain that shutter speed. I'm at 135 millimeter using the 18 to 135 millimeter kit lens, which I really like. Lens works great, especially for the money. Nice range. You can see here, it's a really good range. And the camera video quality is quite good, as well as the audio, you know, for straight out of the box. Uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. So this is where we are in the town of Goshen. We're in a historic walking tour here. See this lens just has awesome range. So shooting directly into the sun is brutal. So this is just a quick test and it's on full auto and everything. Let's show you what it looks like. And you can see the exposure, how it handles it. It's really dark, compensating for the extremely bright background. Quick touch to focus test here. I'm focused on that sign there. I'm just gonna click on the background and you can see how the focus changed. See how it just switched back to the sign? I'm just touching on the screen here. Works really well. And here's just another touch to focus test. Focused on the sign and I'm just gonna click on the right side of the screen to the brick building. So you can see that depth of field change there. Really cool effect. This is great for doing video transitions and stuff like that.
So there's this really good pizza place that I went to and it's called Sorrento's. See that, how you can tell a little story? <laughs> All right, guys, so at the end of the day, I highly recommend the Sony a6400. It's a great camera, and it's the latest camera from Sony. Now, if you really need that image stabilization for the sensor, then I would recommend getting the a6500. But if you don't need that, and you're somebody like me where you're using a tripod most of the time, or you're using shutter speeds that are high enough, or lenses that are fast enough, you really don't need that sensor stabilization. You don't want the extra weight, you know, the lightest camera body possible the a6400 is a phenomenal option. It really is. And I highly recommend it. If, if you're somebody that records videos and does what I'm doing right now, any kind of reviewer or vlogger, for example, and uh, or you just want a great all-around camera for the family, for fun like that, and uh, you know, you're know at, you're at the sporting events with your kids and you want to be able to track them on the field and things like that, this is a really great option for the money, in my opinion. So I highly recommend it. Please be sure to check out all the sample photos and I have tons of articles on my website uh, about the A6400 going into more detail on different areas. I'll also have some other tutorial videos coming out shortly on how to use the camera in more detail. So be sure to check those out. Also, be sure to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I really hope you have a great day. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. And also on the website in the main review article, be sure to leave questions and comments there as well. And uh, I'll get back to you with answers and uh, reply to your comments. I always enjoy reading them. So that's about it for this review. Have a great day, and I will catch up with you next time.